Coogan Cassis here for the Cassis and Helder Show. We're at the Everton Red Triangle Amateur Boxing Club here in Liverpool. With me, I've got professional boxer Ryan Farag. How are you, sir? I'm good, I'm good, yeah. thanks, Coogan. First yeah. of all, I've got to apologise like I am to all the boxers for dragging you out of your training, but I hope you don't mind. No, no, I don't mind, you know, anything for the, for the publicity. <laughs> <laughs> publicity hall, I love it. Um, first of all, uh, there's a huge show on the 6th of March with uh, a lot of these boys, but you're uh, a week later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, looking forward to watching the lads uh, week before, man. But yeah, can't wait. Can't wait to get back out now. Excited. Now, you've already suffered uh, a single career defeat, and it was a prize fighter uh, defeat. Was it to Lee Haskins? Uh, do you count that as an actual defeat on your record? I know it on your record it is, but... Yeah, I mean, it goes down as a loss, so I've, I suppose I've got to. Uh, a lot of people say to me, it doesn't count, it doesn't count, but it's on my record, it, it counts. But, um, you know, hopefully one day, you know, I might get to the, get a shot at Lee and his British and uh, avenge that defeat, maybe. maybe. Something on your on your mind, on your plans? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, he beat me any, so, you know, it's only, only natural for you, for you to want to, you know, go back and beat him. Um, and, you know, at, at, at that time in my career, you know, I've only had four fights. I feel like I've come on a long way since then. And uh, definitely fancy me chances against them. Uh, what year did you turn professional? 2012. 2012. No, 2011. 2011 it was. I think I remember coming to a press conference up in Liverpool when, uh, when you turned professional. I'm not sure. Um... Well, I, might have just, I might have just completely made that up, but I just remember you when you turned professional. I'm sure I was up Liverpool where Francis Warren done a press conference. Were you ever? Um, I don't know. I mean, I boxed on a couple of his bills, but I'm not sure whether I was in any of the press conferences. Maybe. I mean, you know, it's been four years. Since. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago anyway. Um, how do you rate the Bantamweight division uh, right now? Who do you think is at the top of the tree? It's out of two people, I'd say. I mean, I'd say Askins and McDonald are up there at the top, aren't they? But I'd say the rest of the divisions wide open. Um, you know, I'll be looking. I'm, 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 I'm open for British title shot this this season. And uh, you know, the the Askins and McDonald are at world level, so you know whether they'll be interested in that or not, I don't know. But uh, that that's what I'm open for, like British title this year. Obviously, Liverpool's very own Paul Butler uh, stepped up to Bantam and won a world title, come back down and will fight for one at fly, uh, Super Flyweight. So uh, uh, that was an interesting stint for Paul Butler to obviously become a very young world champion from here. Yeah, um, he's been very lucky, hasn't he, uh, to get th those chances. Um, you know, to, 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 to come up to Bantam and then just, just to be able to go down like that. You know, um, he's done well, he's done well for himself. You know, happy for him, he's a good lad. Do you feel like you're ready for a British title shot now, Ryan? Um, I mean, I haven't, I haven't done a 12 rounder. I mean, I haven't even done a 10 rounder. My last fight was scheduled a 10, but it only went seven. Um, I mean, obviously, I've sparred, I've sparred the rounds, but you know, I haven't. So maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not just ready yet. But um, you know, if, if my manager said to me tomorrow, you know, got your British title shot there, I'd be ready. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes it's just about opportunity rather than whether people are deserving or they've sort of earned the right to, to fight for the British Army. If your opportunity presents itself, then you've got you've got to take that with both hands. Yeah, I mean, Ross Birkenshaw, um, he took a fight. Well, champion. Took, yeah. took a fight at, um, I think it was like three or four days' notice and, and, and beat Jason Cunningham. You know, so it just, it just shows you sometimes you've got to take that opportunity when it comes to you. Are you generally pleased by the way things have gone for you since you turned pro? Yeah, yeah, I mean, a bit of a slow, I've had a few injuries and whatnot. Um, after prize fight, I had a bad shoulder injury, which kept me out for a bit. But um, apart from that, I mean, yeah, I mean, now that Nick Neil Marsh took over me from management, you know, uh, this will be my fourth fight uh, coming up for him within a year. So and I've had four fights within a year. So, you know, I can't, I can't complain with that. You know, I'm happy, I'm happy with the way it's going. First time I've been in this gym, uh, it looks to be buzzing. What's the vibe like in this uh, Everton Red Triangle ABC? It's great to um, you know, come in every morning, go and sit in a little office, have a cup of tea with the lads, have a bit of banter for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And then we come out and uh, you know, it's, all, it's all serious. Um, all, all getting ready for, for fight night. And as you can see, you know, 
everyone, everyone loves you here. All the lads we train here, they're all good lads. I love being a part of it. Does everyone just spar each other here? Because you're all sort of not too far off different weights, are you? We're all, we're all similar weights, so yeah. I mean, like me, me Kevin, Jazzy, we all move around. Um, and like you've got the, the younger lads now, uh, Peter McDowell and uh, Andrew Kane. Uh, I mean, I've sort of sparred with them growing up, you know, since they were, since they were kids. But uh, apart from Courtney, Courtney can't spar no one. <laughs> he's too big for us. He, he looks like he's ready for me, he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, he's, he's great to have around the gym, Courtney, though, you know. Uh, so he's, there's, always, there's always something, him and Mick are always up to something. Um, obviously, uh, Mick and Paul uh, do the running of uh, the daily goings-on here. Uh, what's it like under their guidance? It's great, you know, I mean, you know, I've been with Paul and Mick since I was 14, 15, and... Um, you know, before that, I, I didn't really have any any sort of role models in my life, if you like. And uh, you know, that's what Paul and Mick were to me when I was when I was young, and uh, I've looked up to them ever since. And uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to be on this journey with them. So that's it. All right. Well, listen, Liverpool boxing is certainly buzzing at the moment. So uh, long may it continue um, on your bill, and also March the sixth could have a couple of new world champions. So let's certainly hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, you know, uh, all all the scouts lads, you know, I'll be down there rooting for them all. Um, you know, Terry as well. You know, I hope he hope he gets his title, and, and obviously the lads. So, looking forward to seeing how it unfolds on the night. All right, Ryan. Listen, thanks for talking to the Cassius and Hilda show. Uh, I'll let you get back to training now. Um, if you're up for a spa, I think if two of you were to spa me, I don't think yeah. that'll make up the weight even then. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, you'd have no chance. <laughs> James is always up for a spa, even with smaller guys. Yeah, he's a liberty, liberty taker. What we? Ah, <laughs> Sean Coogan, nice speaking right. to you. Anyway, Coogan, Cassius here with Ryan Farag for the Cassius and Hilda show. Thank you very much.